Let me know what you think in the comments and what? Hello? I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for a ransom. Can this wait? If you are looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular... Yeah, I'm going to have to call you back about this. I'm going to know something. I've acquired All right, bye. Okay, so back to what I was saying. This technique is a very cool setup, super reliable. There's not a lot of attacks from bottom guard in Nogi. The attacks that are effective are leg entanglement, leg locks, and this is another one of them that's a little less popular because it's not in the heel hook family, it's in the knee bar family, which I'm uh, more proficient in, I would say. Well, I'm equally proficient. Anyways, watch the video, leave a like on the video so that we can try and get this uh, train rolling and let us know what you think of the technique in the comments. Thanks. I don't want to go into any sort of rolling toeholds. I want to focus more, focus more on the finishes and positions that are a little more reliable. So let's just do a really simple entry into the exact same position. We're just here in knee shield, and this is a very common guard. You're going to have to be playing nogi, and you're pretty limited on your attacks as far as sweeps. I kind of have head control. I might be able to get some wrist control, maybe do something here to sit up. I might be able to work some like sort of arm drag action, trying to create some action here. But that's all to this side. If I want to do anything to this side, I'm pretty much limited to Kimuras. However, one of the best attacks you can do is instead of attacking either of these limbs, just go for this leg. And I'm just going to do that just by reaching underneath. And at the same time, I don't want to just commit to the reach, because then he's going to hit me with a super solid cross face, and I'm going to lose my control. So as I reach, I also build a frame here by connecting my elbow to my knee. And now if he pressures in to try and cross face me, I have this really solid frame and the cross face, even if he starts to connect, it's not enough to actually crank my face. And then right from here, I'm in a position to connect my hands for a full gable grip and I can use my knee to push him away. So I'm not actually pulling his leg on top of me, which is a common mistake I see people make. They try and pull the leg over and that can be very, very hard and it's a lot of exertion. Whereas if I build my frame and I just kind of use that to maneuver him that way. So I use my whole frame position here and I maneuver his upper body to expose the leg. Right from here, this is starting to look familiar. The right leg, the one I was telling all of you guys to lock down on his spine goes right here. And this is very important because it's gonna latch my hips to his hips. So he's not gonna be able to spin out. If I don't do that and I try and go over the thigh here, he's free to rotate. So the way I stop the rotation is by locking my calf down his spine here. My other foot was underneath still, and you're just freeing that by just bringing it up and through, or you can kind of just turn this way to bring it through here. And now your opponent's not just gonna leave you here. He's gonna be trying to frame or base or get to a position here. Once the leg is exposed, don't make the mistake of putting the knee to this side. It feels like you should put it to this side for maybe like a heel hook or something, but there's not a lot of attacks here. The attacks come from bringing the knee to this side, here. And this is a position I call knee bar guard, and you'll feel it lock in place when you bring the knee to this side. The whole thing fits together like a puzzle piece here, and you can probably feel this too, Jason. We're like really connected here, and you can't rotate either way, and you can't really extend your legs anymore either. And now this foot's totally exposed. He can't reach to defend the foot, and he can't use this leg to cross his feet to do any sort of uh, shenanigans to block me on this side either. So this position is very, very strong. And then I'm free to actually secure my toe hold here. And at this point, your opponent's probably thinking, oh, I need to roll or turn or something, but then it's too late. He's locked in. I have my toe hold position and I've isolated his hips and leg in a way that he's unable to rotate to relieve the pressure here. Okay. So it all comes down to this knee. If you neglect that and leave the knee in the center and I start doing this, look, he can rotate very easily. He can turn and start to relieve pressure. So it's very important you lock that knee in the right spot. I'll show you from this side now. So we're just in a knee shield position. Just don't get sloppy and start reaching first without building your frame. You must build the frame. So the frame is just elbow to knee here and then the, the frame hand goes under his armpit. And that's gonna help me actually rotate him to pull this leg through. Now from here, your opponent might try and run away, but as long as I'm controlling at the knee joint here, and then I lock this up, he's not gonna be able to get away. And at this point now, he can't really rotate either. It's pretty tough for him to rotate, and now I have to start trying to move this knee into my hip to complete the locked knee bar guard. And I just do that by pulling the knee across. But I wanna get this leg out first, because if I leave this leg behind and then bring it down, I might not have a chance to get that leg out to complete the lock. So while we're still here and he's thinking about trying to roll or escape, 
I'm locking, pulling the knee down into my hip, and then locking it in place with my armpit here. And now I'm gonna start taking the toes. And even if he rolls through to this, to this side, you can see he can't roll any further. And he may try and kick, my, kick at my hands and feet with his foot, but even if it kicks my hands off, the foot's still there. And eventually I'll be able to kind of create some distance and then take it very quickly before he has a chance to kick it again. Especially if I'm tucking the foot far over here, now he won't be able to reach with the other foot to kick and defend nearly as easily. Okay, and now he's taking any risk. If he does anything other than tap here, he might start popping some ligaments, okay? So one more time, let's do it from this angle again. Over here for me, Jay. Now there will be some situations where this isn't enough. He's just settling his weight enough that if I don't connect my hands, I don't have the power to actually pull him over. In this situation, you must connect your hands, but I don't sacrifice my frame for that. Even if I connect my hands, I keep my elbow engaged. So I'm kind of framing with the, my tricep instead of my forearm how I was. So I keep the frame, connect, and then I use all of this to pull that leg up over the top of me. Almost like I'm entering X guard for a second. But instead of going to like a single leg X or X guard position, I'm locking the knee bar guard. Here, bringing this leg over, locking in place, controlling the foot and the knee to lock it here, and then connecting at the toes. Once the toes are connected, we've done 90% of the work to finish him already. The leg's in perfect position. He's already in the finishing position. I just need to be able to apply more pressure. And that is done just by completing the full lock for the toe hold. Okay? Any questions on that? Let's do it. One, two, three. There's her butt there. Locks right there. And then we're going to control the knee joint and bring it into your hip. Right here? Yeah, and then get the toe. Use that to lock it in place even more. Nice. Um, like move back up here for me. Like this. And then you want to have this hip on the ground a little bit more. Yeah, there, here, and here, here. And then slide this knee as down into your hip as you can, like that. And then we're reaching around, connecting at your wrist here. Nice. And then instead of just like, you're kind of just squeezing for no, just in this direction, bring it here, inward. Yeah. And then before, instead of extending your arms, keep it tight to you. Do a crunch. Yeah. And then twist. Nice. If you, if you don't go right down his spine, they can kind of like sit back on you sometimes and kind of get their butt in between your legs and maybe grab your feet. So if you just go right down the middle, it usually will lock them in place a little bit better. Which, the only thing here is if, if, you, if you neglect that leg lined up down his butt, there's a chance that he can get up to his other leg now and put pressure on you in a way that makes it difficult for you to finish. So yeah, you gotta lock this in place to kind of keep him down. And then your, your, your weight is on this hip. I actually want it on this hip. So rotate this way, do a little bit more of a shrimp, a little more, a little more, yeah. There, there we go. This position, focus on that squeeze. Now you're gonna, and then make sure that the grip here is on this part of his foot. Yes, that's gonna bend his foot down a little more and then toe goes to butt. More of a twist there at the end with your wrists. But that was good. At black belt you see toe holds used more for like a scoring mechanic. This is a very good point. An actual submission, what do you have to say about that? I think it, at black belt, people are a little better at recognizing the danger before it really is locked in. So. It's kind of like the ankle lock. You can grab an ankle lock, but that doesn't mean it's threatening. The toe hold is very similar. If you don't do all the setup first and then grab the toe, it's unlikely you'll be able to finish. If you're just grabbing the toe hold first before doing any of the setup, it's super easy to get, but it's not going to result in a submission. But there is a loophole that can, can kind of be exploited in IBJJF where just grabbing the toe hold forces your opponent to spin to escape it, even though they weren't really in very much danger. And that spin, a lot of times, will result in them moving out of bounds. So you're, it's kind of like a steering wheel that can steer you out of bounds. And in IBJJF, if you move out of bounds with a submission, it's two points. So it has sort of a slant application in Yi competition specifically, where you can use it as a locomotive ability just to flee the mat to, to take advantage of the two-point loophole. So you'll see that a lot in IBJF, which gives people the wrong impression of what the toehold is, I think. In Nogi, you don't see that as much because it's not rewarded in the same way in most ADCC or other Nogi events. So you'll see people set it up a little bit more securely. But very good point. Quite an astute observation. That leg up on his spine, yeah. The clamp is where it's at. Say question? Uh, yes. 
What's that? So like, let's say like in a realistic situation, whenever you get in that position where connect, you offset, and you're here, mm -hmm. do you prefer to like right, lock first. first? Yeah, I like to do that. That way you use your body, not your arms? Yeah, well, it's both. It's like, I could like to control the knee, keep their leg bent a little bit, and then get that knee into like the hip. Once you're here, it's pretty tight. If you like try to move your arms, it gives them like some. I don't know. That's why I was asking if you prefer to do that. I don't think there's any wrong way to do it. I mean, every situation is going to be a little different. This is more of a guideline. Like, if you follow these guidelines, it most likely will work. But of course, there's times so that you got to kind of improvise. Yeah. If you're on your left hip, it reduces a lot of the squeeze you can do with this leg. Whereas if you shift okay. to your right hip, it's really going to allow you to lock down a little bit more. Like this. And, oh, that'll, yeah, I feel it. and that'll stop her from being able to have the opportunity to rotate if she, okay. if she could. It kind of just locks her in place over you.